Hello loves, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I want to talk to you about all of the books that I have read in August. Um, it's been a very varied month. It's been a, a surprising month. Uh, there's been some five stars, there's been a one star. Um, very mixed bag of books. So as a warning, I do have a feeling that this is going to be quite a long one because I've read more books than usual and also I just I just want to talk about them so grab a drink have a stretch get some food whatever but yeah let's talk about some books so the first book I read this month was Ninth House by Lee Bardugo um, I've been wanting to read this for a really really long time um, and I am incredibly glad that I finally did so Ninth House follows the story of Alex Stern who is our main character um, and she gets offered an opportunity to attend Yale University um, not typically sort of would have been an option to her before um, but she is offered um, to attend um, on the condition that she joins one of their secret societies um, and the reason um, that sort of uh, they offer her this opportunity is because the secret societies of this fictionalized version of Yale um, are very interested in sort of trying to find out what's what's happening beyond the veil or sort of on the other side after death um, and Alex can see ghosts and has been able to since she was a child um, it's something that sort of had quite a, a big impact on her life um, and sort of yeah we're kind of aware of this and offer her this opportunity so um, we follow Alex trying to find her place at this sort of very prestigious university um, that you know I suppose for a lot of it she doesn't really feel like she fits there um but also sort of follow her trying to solve a murder that has happened um within the town is yeah, the town i don't know um so yeah there's magic from the uh societies there's it's sort of very mysterious sort of trying to work out this murder um and it's very sort of dark academia theme i gave this book five stars initially i gave it four stars and then i sat on that for a few days and i was like no actually i really fucking love this book so i changed it to five stars i love lee bardugo i'm probably going to enjoy anything she writes most of the time um but this just it, it took me a little while to get into but i don't necessarily know that that's the fault of the book and more just that i was maybe feeling a little bit burnt out so my concentration wasn't really there but once i did get into it i could not put it down um the as as lee always does the characters are great um i love all of the characters in this book um well not all of them but you know the the main ones um alex especially has quickly become like one of my favorite characters of all time she's fucking awesome um i mean when i was first reading it and we don't really know her backstory or sort of how she's ended up here or what's happened to her it i was kind of not i didn't dislike her but i was kind of confused to like why i can understand this response to things but i don't understand why you you specifically are responding to things in sort of quite a defensive sort of almost aggressive way um and then sort of as the book goes we sort of find out more about her and what's happened in her past and she's she's just awesome she's amazing i love her um and i think that actually is something this book does really well is um sort of incorporates that what's happening right now versus what's happened before this story that we're in and i know some people of reviews that i've read didn't enjoy that aspect of it um but i think this is something that lee also did quite a lot in six of crows and something that in other books i typically don't like because i don't really care about what's happened in the past i just want to know the story and sort of get it going but i think the reason i quite like this in lee's books you know we can be um in the middle of a scene where characters are, are talking something over or something's just happened and then suddenly you know we're back in the past where whatever's happening in the present has reminded the character of something in the past and i think the reason i enjoy that um in lee's book specifically is because she writes characters that i care about and want to know what's happened to them in the past so i think 
because I connected so much with those characters I really enjoyed that but I do appreciate it's not for everyone it does sort of make the pace feel a little bit slower at times but I still wouldn't say I felt like the pace of the book was slow at all um it was you know there was enough there to keep you going and then I suppose other things to say the the writing generally was was great um I really like Lee's writing style um and sort of the, the descriptions of things were very rich like I could really picture everything in my head even though I've never been to or seen Yale University I could sort of really have that picture in my head um the like vibe of the society like meetings or I can't remember what they're called like the they're not like seances but the things that they do um the the descriptions of those was like you know there was that atmospheric description and I will say that sort of the the things that happen within the societies and quite a few of the things in this book are a little bit more like on the gory side or there are some darker themes definitely touched on in this book personally it didn't make me feel uncomfortable I was quite quite comfortable reading it um but do maybe check content warnings beforehand if you are sort of a little bit um I don't know what the right word is but if if you know that those sorts of things can tend to sort of maybe upset you a little bit more um or affect you sort of negatively but all in all fantastic book i just hit the mic i'm really sorry <laughs> on from that the next book that i read was how bent <laughs> Um, also by Lee Bardugo which is the second book in the series um I literally ordered this as soon as I'd finished Ninth House because I, I just wanted to keep reading it I wanted to keep going um so this one pretty much picks off right where Ninth House leaves off um so to explain this without explaining what happened in Ninth House so there's no spoilers um the gang go on a hell heist essentially um and we all know Lee writes heists so well um so yeah they they're the, the the main part of the book is um sort of trying to journey into hell to get something back um when there is sort of other of course other things going on there's is there another murder there is other murders yeah there's other murders that sort of Alex is also trying to solve but she's sort of definitely being pulled in sort of more different directions um there's sort of new friends and um allies that are sort of joining then the the group um and we get to learn more about those other characters that were maybe sort of a little bit more in the background in the first book which I really enjoyed um so this I gave four stars I don't really know I don't know how to explain what was missing from it compared to the first one and why it just didn't hit the same as the first one because I still really enjoyed it it was still really good um but I think just I don't know the vibe of the first one just it, it just got me in more this like I say enjoyed the vibes of this one it was still great but just didn't quite reach that the level of the first one I don't really know how to put it into words other than that honestly <laughs> I was this isn't why I docked her style but I was very angry when I discovered at the end that there's another book coming <laughs> series because I thought this was a duology I was like it's gonna be done and this hellbent only came out like earlier this year so now I have to wait however long to read the next one and I'm gonna forgot everything that happened by then um so that that was irritating but um yeah I don't really know what to say other than that honestly it was really good it was good the characters were good the writing was good it just it didn't hit the same as the first one that's all I can say that's the only my brain's not working that well today oh shit sorry my brain's not working that well today I'm very tired I got very early this morning which I'm not used to so apologies if the words are not wording today <laughs> so the next book i read this month i don't actually have on its own i just have it um included in this sort of complete works of oscar wilde and that is the picture of dorian gray um i don't know why it took me so long to read this book honestly um it's something that um i've i've known that i would probably like i really enjoyed the film with ben barnes in it um i just never read it but i have i can't remember if i said this last month I have made it my mission to read one classic a month um, so I don't burn myself out by reading them um, but I do still get sort of some of 
some of those classics that I have avoided for so many years because I found them intimidating. Um, oh my god, this book. I don't know what was in that book, but I literally devoured it. Like, I could not stop reading it. I read it in one sitting, which admittedly it's not a very long book, um, but I, I just couldn't stop once I started. I just had to finish it. It was like the easiest to read classic I've ever read. And, and I mean, you know, to be fair, I haven't actually read that many classics, like from start to finish. Um, but it was it was very easy to read. It was fantastic. In case you don't know what it's about, <laughs> I feel like most people will badge. I was talking to um, Becky the other day, um, who I have done a video with on this channel. If you want to watch it, I'll put it somewhere. Um, but I was talking to her and she didn't know what it was about. So um, I will explain for people who, who maybe don't know. Um, to put it very simply, Dorian is, I suppose, kind of the main character, but I would say there's sort of three main characters in this book. But sort of Dorian is sort of the youngest of these characters and is almost sort of maybe comes across as very sort of naive and quite impressionable. Um, and he starts talking to um, his friend's friend. Um, who sort of, you know, starts talking a lot about how youth is so important and you're only gonna look this great for so long and, you know, it, it, savour it while you can because once it's gone, it's gone. Um, and um, Dorian was having his picture painted by his friend um, and sort of when he looks at the picture, he's like, oh, I wish this picture could age instead of me. Um, and so sort of almost like swap places. Um, and that actually happens somehow. It's never really explained how that happens, but that doesn't really bother me. Um, and then the sort of story follows what happens after that and sort of the effects that that has on Dorian Gray. I rate this five stars as well. And I just want to say I'm very stingy with five star ratings. I don't, it's very rare that I rate something five stars and so far there's already two books this month. I don't have a bad word to say about this book, honestly. Um, it's, it was, it was, poetic. I've never wanted to like annotate something as much in my life. Like so many quotable lines in this book. Like I said, very easy to read for a classic. And I mean, e even though literally dialogue, like one person speaking can go on for like two pages, it's still incredibly easy to read. Apart from one chapter, I don't remember what chapter it is. And a lot of people are saying this actually, that is just, it, it was supposed to, I think, summarise quite a long period of time in Dorian's life, so it doesn't, like, drag. I think it's, I can't remember how long it was supposed to be, like, maybe 10 years. Um, and it's basically just sort of explaining all of the things he's done in that time. And while things were still explained very beautifully, it was incredibly boring, that chapter, actually. But, you know, that's one chapter out of the whole book, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold that against it, to be honest. Aside from that, yeah, everything was very easy to read. Like I said, I just wanted to keep going. The characters, even though it's, like, a quite a short book, I don't know, like, if you get the book <laughs> actually is a book on its own. I don't know how long it is, but I think it's only, like, 150 pages in this, like, um, collection that I have. Um, so even though it's a very short book, the characters still feel very rich and different from each other um, and d d distinct and sort of you can see their personalities, which is, is really quite impressive, I think. Um, and like enough for me to viscerally hate one of the characters, which takes a lot. Um, but so yeah, there's sort of well-written characters like I say everyone's everything's described beautifully um I just I don't really have a bad word to say I will say because I know this is a thing there is a lot of misogyny in this book however I do feel to me anyway and I don't know if this was the intention or if this is true at all but to me it did very much feel like this just came across as the opinion of a character specifically I mean there are a few characters who talk quite misogynistically. Is that a word? I don't know. Um, but specifically, it did feel more like it just came across as one character's opinions. It didn't feel like that was the opinion of the book. To me, anyway, I might be wrong, but that's how I interpreted it. That's my opinion! But um, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this. This has literally quickly become 
very very quickly become one of my favorite books of all time would recommend if you haven't already read it the next book i read i don't have a physical copy of or a version of on my kindle because i listened to it on audiobook i'll just put a little picture here um so this is and away by bob mortimer um which is his autobiography memoir i don't, I don't know i started listening to this actually a very long time ago and for some reason i don't i just kind of dropped off with reading it I don't really know why um so I started it from the beginning again this month and decided to finish it um and it was fantastic it was so good um I love Bob Mortimer with my whole heart I find him so comforting um and quite often we'll just watch compilations of him on YouTube because he is like the father I never had. <laughs> I, I knew I was gonna like this and the audiobook is narrated by him as well so it does just feel like he's telling you like a nice story. Um and yeah it was it was fantastic. If you if you don't know because I don't know how well known Bob is outside of like the UK, um he is a very well loved, very well known comedian in the UK um who it's just quite silly <laughs> and very sweet and very comforting and I love him um and yeah this this generally was just a very comforting lesson I mean you know he he talks in it quite a lot about one of the main things he talks about is um sort of heart problems he's had over the past few years which is obviously you know a bit more on the serious side um but that's sort of then interspersed with um sort of the the tales of his youth um and sort of more silly things um which is just incredibly comforting and and um he quite often does a show in the uk uh called would i lie to you where contestants sort of go on and sort of tell stories and you know the other members of the team have to guess whether the person's lying about it or not um and it was really nice sort of hearing in the book things that he's maybe briefly mentioned on there and sort of finding out actually the the actual truth behind them or the full sort of story behind them um which yeah was was really fun um and there's there's this whole section at the end where he i mean first he sort of lists off all of the advice that his mum gave him um and then he sort of lists off all the advice he would give that he's learned throughout his life and it was it was just so sweet it was so comforting i really enjoyed it um it feels very weird to give uh like an autobi an autobiography or something like that a rating but I'm so I'm gonna give it five stars because it was it was incredible it was it was so sweet I really enjoyed it you should read it okay the next book I read um I read on my kindle my kindle's downstairs and I'm gonna be honest I can't be bothered to go get it so again I'm just gonna put a picture here um this is Summer Unplugged um I don't actually off the top of my head remember who this is by I'm really sorry but it will be on the screen and it will be in the description um I got this on um, Stuff Your Kindle Day for free um, and I was just looking for some easy to read summer romances. I didn't really read the like blurb or synopsis of this book properly clearly um, because I did not realise it was about teenagers and it's like I think supposed to be therefore aimed at teenagers. <laughs> but I started reading it and I was like it's a really short book it's only like 150 pages I'm not gonna fucking read it um it can't be that bad I don't know if it's just because this book was for teenagers but this was definitely not for me this is my I think first ever one star review of a book um and you know I, I do <laughs> I mean the writing wasn't great it wasn't awful and like I say I'm not a teenager um I think if I had read this when I was like 12 or 13 I probably would have thought it was fine but I'm not 12 or 13 so basically it's about a girl who is obsessed with her phone I can't remember how old she is she's like 15 16 um she's obsessed with her phone she has a shitty boyfriend um and she's just not listening to anything her mum says so her mum's solution to this is to send her um for the summer holidays um to her grandparents house and they live somewhere um like in kind of in the middle of nowhere it's like a really small town um and this is like the worst thing in the world that could have ever happened to this character potentially that's just one of the reasons i didn't really enjoy this because to me that would be fucking lovely i would love to just go to a little town where like you know there's hardly anyone there and you can just walk around some fields or some trees um and things like that um and just have like a quiet summer that would be lovely um so i think potentially that was i just did not relate to this character at all she was 
incredibly whiny and annoying. However, I do feel like, and a lot of teenagers might disagree with me, (laughs) not the most inaccurate representation of teenagers. I went back recently and found a load of writing that I'd done when I was probably about 13 or 14. And the characters I'd written then, exactly the same as this character, whiny, annoying, just pissed off for no reason all the time. You know, I wrote that when I was a teenager, so it probably is kind of accurate, but just for me now reading it as an adult, I was like, this is just not for me. Um, And the romance in it as well was just, meh. They hardly knew each other. It was really rushed. I didn't really know anything about the love interest aside from that he likes motorbikes and like literally that's the only thing you find out about him pretty much. Um, I don't really know anything about the main character other than that she's obsessed with her phone. Yeah, it just it just wasn't for me. I I mean to be fair as well, I was like, oh I have books that are like summer romance, like specifically set in summer romances, I should read them now before it's autumn. and. I was like, oh, so I'll just get through it. I read that one and realised I was not in the mood for that kind of thing. And I'm too old, clearly, for that. So if you are a teenager, you might enjoy. Otherwise, probably don't read it. So the next two books that I read um, were also on my Kindle. So I don't have them, so I'll just put pictures here. Um, and I am just going to put them together because they are two books in, in the same series. And I felt very similar about both of them. Um, so it's The Serpent and the Wings of Night and the... Ashes and the Star Cursed King, I think is what they're called. Um, I've seen a lot of really good things about these books um, and I fucking love vampires. So I was like, hell yeah, I'm gonna read this. Um, and do you know what? Enjoyable read. <laughs> yeah, no, I quite enjoyed them. Um, so the first one is about um, our main character who I think her name is Araya. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it, but I think that's her name. Um, and she is a human who has been adopted by the vampire king, Vincent, um, and has sort of grown up in the vampire court and has basically been taught by him that, you know, the world is very dangerous for you as a human, especially living in a vampire court. Um, So you need to learn to defend yourself and he sort of teaches her how to fight and she's pretty awesome and goes around like sort of killing vampires in in villages that are gonna um, like attack humans and stuff. So she's pretty cool. Um, And there is this event thing happening, which is sort of very Hunger Games-esque, I suppose, um, where you can sort of put yourself forward to participate. And basically there's three trials. No, there isn't three trials. I don't remember how many trials there are, but there's a certain amount of trials that all of the contestants have to go through. And then whoever is the the one standing at the end, whoever wins, um, gets a gift from the goddess Nyaxia. I think that's how you pronounce that as well. Usually it's only vampires who take part in this, but Araya takes part um, after her and her dad, or Vincent, her adopted dad, um, have this sort of agreement. I can't exactly remember why they've just, I know why, but I I can't remember what it's called or how to explain (laughs) what they were gonna do when she won, like what she was gonna ask her as her gift. but it was some kind of magical thing where like she'd get powers or something. Um, so she decides to take part because it's the only way she's ever gonna be strong enough to survive in the vampire world, essentially. Um, and the majority of the book then is her being in these trials and sort of forming unlikely allies with, is I think his name's Rain, I think. That's how you pronounce it. Um, who is a vampire who, um, she shouldn't trust but she does um and there's sort of romance um there with that as well um the first book that one that I've just explained um again it took me a little while to to get into it and I do think the beginning was a little bit slow but then once I was into it and I was connected with the characters I was all there for it it was good again I, I quite enjoyed the writing style it was very different to like other writing styles I usually enjoy, but I did find it quite funny at times because it was first person in a rise head and it was just, it was how I would talk if if I was, um, you know, if if I was a main character because it was just swearing, it was quite funny. Um, So it felt quite 
authentic it's but i suppose it felt like her voice which was quite nice yeah so the, i enjoyed the writing i liked the the characters were pretty good as well um the end absolutely fucking threw me for a loop i was literally sat there like what is happening i'm really confused very conflicted um but like in a good way i was like, I'm, like literally i had joked that like maybe like wouldn't it be funny if not exactly what happens in the book but something similar happens oh wouldn't that be funny um and then it, it got to the end and i was like what <laughs> what's happening so yeah i immediately picked up the next one which is the ashes and star curse king um i can't remember if i said this by the way i rated both of them four stars um i do think the first one was slightly better than the second one not enough that i would rate them differently um but the, the second one um essentially so Araya and her uh, and Vincent are there's like different factions of vampires and Araya and Vincent are from the House of Night and they're the ones who've been in sort of power. So in the second book, the House of Night get knocked out of power, um, and the Rishan house, I think, <laughs> um, take control instead. Um and essentially then it's you know i suppose there's there's kind of battles almost sort of that struggle for power um araya is dealing with a lot of shit um a lot of different emotions that she doesn't want to deal with because usually she just sort of pushes them down um and it's i would say less action-packed than the first one it did feel a little bit slower there is a lot more just sort of thinking um than things actually happening there doesn't you know things do still happen there's still action happening in it um but it is maybe sort of a little bit slower than the first one um but i still enjoyed it i did still enjoy it i did end up getting quite annoyed not quite annoyed but a little bit more annoyed with the riot in the second one than i did the first one um for reasons that if i say them it will kind of spoil the first one so i'm not going to say why i was annoyed with her <laughs> but i was just kind of a little bit um but it was still it was still an enjoyable little duo there is going to be more books in the series but not following those same characters um which i'm quite looking forward to because there's one character in particular i think i would pronounce her name misha but it might be mish i don't know how you say her name um who i was a little bit conflicted quite a lot the way through of whether i liked her or not um but she um, I think is going to be the main character of the next book so I'm looking forward to that because um, I would like to know more about her and see see what happens um, there is also I think there's like a short story that's been released about two of the characters that are kind of background characters in this these two books um, so I might read that as well because I love vampires and I will read anything related to vampires I feel like that was incredibly brambly and probably not the most helpful review but it was good it was a good read a little bit slow at times but generally good the next two books are where oh, i have very similar reviews of so i am going to separate them because they are completely different books so the first one is another kindle read so i'll just we'll pop a little picture here but that is foxglove yeah yeah foxglove <laughs> um by adeline grace belladonna the first book in this series was fantastic i really enjoyed it and i was so 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 looking forward to this book um and unfortunately it just fell really really short for me so i suppose foxglove kind of it does pretty much pick up where belladonna left off i think i don't really remember the ending of belladonna that well but there's another murder um and this time um, Signa's, who is our main character, Signa's uncle is accused of the murder, but they are, her and her cousin Blythe are pretty sure that it wasn't the uncle. Um, so that's kind of the mystery element of, of the book is sort of trying to find out who actually did that and why and trying to get their uncle out of prison because he's gonna potentially be sentenced to hang, um, which obviously they don't want to happen. Um, and one thing I did really enjoy about this book actually is we get some chapters from um, Signa's point of view and then we also get some chapters from Blythe's point of view and um, I, Blythe's a fantastic character, I really enjoyed her um, and I'm really happy that we got sort of those bits of her um, in there as well so that was something that was, that was really positive about it. Um, we also get introduced to a new character, Fate. Um, so Death was sort of the main 
supernatural character in the first one death is still kind of in this he's not in it very much which i think is one of the reasons i didn't like it that much because i'm like where's death he's a great character where is he um but we get introduced to fate um who's death's brother i don't think that's a spoiler anyway um yeah we get introduced to fate and i fucking hated this man i don't you're not supposed to like him i don't think but i hated him and just the more and more the story went on i was getting progressively more annoyed with him and also signa's reactions to him and i think that was potentially why it was just for me a lot of the a lot of the book focuses on trying to work out what fate is trying to do trying to stop him and come up with things of yeah sort of defense for him um but i think the problem i had is that kind of leaves the mystery element of the murder just kind of forgotten it wasn't really a massive focus and and i think that's something i enjoyed a lot about belladonna was that the mystery trying to figure out who's poisoning blythe was the the main part of it and it was it you just wanted to keep reading it and find out what happened with foxglove it kind of almost felt like that bit was forgotten a little bit and sort of left to the side because fate took sort of the main um the main focus of the book um which i yeah i just i think that kind of made it feel a little bit lacking for me i still didn't see like all of the the twists i suppose and the reveals i didn't see it wait actually who did kill him i don't fucking remember he killed him i don't think i'd guessed mm, i don't know anyway things were set up in a way that i you know was surprised enjoyably surprised when things were revealed but it just it didn't have the same vibe <laughs> that belladonna did i don't i don't know what happened i'm so yeah i was quite upset honestly because i was really looking forward to this book and then it was just kind of a bit i had to sit and think about it for a while because i was like what what why what's happened why do i feel like this about this book oh i remember who killed him now yeah yeah no i hadn't guessed that yeah anyway i i think that is pretty much fuck i think that is pretty much my thoughts about it just there wasn't enough mystery death wasn't in it enough i didn't like fate as a character at all and he was just constantly there um so and there wasn't did i say this there wasn't yeah there wasn't enough mystery solving so it just fell a little bit short for me which is really disappointing um there is going to be a third book in the series though which i will happily read and i hope that it's better um but yeah you know i might i might be alone in this because i've seen some other reviews say sort of similar things to me i've seen other review people who still loved it um so it might just be me that sort of didn't get that same vibe from but who knows the last book that i read this month was the london seance society by sarah panna this was another one where i really liked sarah's previous book the lost apothecary loved that book um so was really excited to read this one which is not related by the way they're completely different books but was really excited to read this and i and it just fell short for me again um i will say though this book is really nicely floppy i really enjoy a floppy book i made it very easy to read without um affecting the spine at all um because i mean usually i don't give a shit about cracking the spine but um yeah this one just flops open fantastic anyway this book um is about a girl named lena whose sister has died um and um as a result she is learning how to do seances from a renowned and very famous seancer <laughs> i don't know what the name is um called what's her name vaudeline I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, she's learning how to do seances from her as kind of like an, an understudy. So she can conduct a seance um, to summon her sister and find out who killed her and what happened. Um, and it's set in Victorian, kind of between Victorian London and Paris. So Vaudeline and Lena are in Paris. That's where Vaudeline lives um, and sort of does 
her teaching but then back in London there's another character who we have sort of the point of view of in this book called Mr Morley um, and he is part of the London Science Society so the London Science Society is a elite men's club um, that um, tries to preserve the reputation of sort of things on the more spiritual side so things like clairvoyance seances shit like that um and um the founder and head of the society has also been murdered so mr morley contacts vaudeline um to ask her to conduct a seance so they can find out what happened to him both her and lena travel back to london where she then also hopes they can do a seance for her sister um and so throughout the book there's sort of chapters that are um in third person about both vaudeline and um lena and then there's chapters in first person from mr morley's point of view which at first i was like i don't know if i like this but it served a purpose it was supposed to and i'll talk about that in a moment um so this was another three star rating because i don't i don't i don't understand what happened in this book honestly because as in i i know what happened like the plot but i don't i don't understand what happened you know like this i should have loved this so it's victorian ghosts gothic it's sapphic i i should have loved it. it ticks so many boxes for me but it just, yeah, you know? Um, so I feel like the first maybe 50 to 60% of this book was okay. And then it just kind of went downhill after that in terms of things getting very repetitive. And it wasn't that so much that the writing changed. It was, it was just something happened where suddenly I was just getting quite frustrated reading it. Um, so what I sort of mentioned earlier with the different points of view. So at first I was like, why are we getting Mr. Morley's point of view in first person? And then we're getting this in third person. Um, but I think that it, it was a good decision to do that. Mr. Morley, we sort of meet and we sort of hear a bit of his backstory um, with the society and sort of connections he has to different people um, and obviously we're, we're seeing it all from his lens from his point of view um, and sort of feel quite sympathetic towards him um, and just sort of just learning little bits here and there and it's almost sort of like a nice addition to the story it sort of helps you start to piece things together and that was quite a nice addition it was sort of a bit different what then happened sort of maybe 50 to 60 percent away of through the book may have been earlier than that i don't remember um it went from being like little hints little tastes of things to just explicitly telling you everything that you'd kind of already guessed a little bit or you sort of had little hints of and you're like oh i wonder if that means that or if that's happening um and then yeah just like as if it, we wouldn't have worked it out ourselves <laughs> like just suddenly just this is what happened this is what i did um like explicitly and it was just almost a bit like first it was like yeah i know i worked that out already and two this just feels a, a bit shit and like why are you telling me this mr morley um i liked the little hints and sort of not not quite knowing but sort of starting to piece it together and then it just became so almost quite obvious and and then from that point on the different points of view just became so repetitive because you would be switching between them in different scenes and so we'd get vaudeline and um Lena reacting to something and then you'd go to mr morley and he would recap what had just happened for you even though you've just read it and then sort of say something else and then you'd go back to the other two and they would recap what's just happened and, and it just became incredibly repetitive and like I say just quite frustrating to read um which I don't understand because it was working so well in the first half and it was like you know readable and okay and then it just suddenly was like and I just I don't understand I don't get it what happened and yeah I think like just just by the end I was just bored because like there's like four or five chapters of just the same thing happening over and over again or just like really being stretched out where I'm like I, I honestly lost count of how many times I said yeah I know this just happened you don't need to tell me again 
just get like just get to the point get to the resolution or the reveal or you know whatever just come on because we already know all of this it was good in terms of like the theme and the when there was seances they were explained and described in a way that was there was that spookiness to them and it felt atmospheric but there was two seances in the whole book and I would I would just would have expected there to be more you know of that sort of vibe and yeah I just I don't know what happened I was so excited for this book um and it just really didn't just didn't hit the mark for me that is all of the books I've read this month I would love to know what you've been reading this month what you're planning to read in September the next book I'm gonna read is Dracula and I'm very excited to start that um but yeah let me know what you're reading what you have read and if you've read any of these books as always let me know what you thought of them because I am always interested in hearing other people's opinions on these books thank you for hanging out with me as always I will see you very soon bye